of the worship team at Faith Cathedral Deliverance Center located at 4425 North Powers Drive. And we will be so we will be ministering a medley of hymns and songs that we grew up on. We're all from Jamaica. So these are songs that maybe you know them. <laughs> they're, they're sang a different way. Um, but this is how we grew up on them, amen? So you can stand, you can dance, you can move around, amen? With Israel, there is a loud of bondage to a sea before them lay. The Lord reached out his mighty hand and rolled the sea.
to come to the altar. This is a popular song by Danny B. Hall, not for us, but for the children. You ready to heal them? May we have a little lamb. A little lamb. So y'all know about that. A little lamb. the Lord. And I would like for Minister Valerie, First Lady Valerie um, Armstrong she's going to help me lead the song. Hallelujah. Hey, right again, praise God.
have the armor. Hallelujah, we are filled of His Spirit. Hallelujah, we're refreshing Him. Hallelujah. He's given us the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit. Hallelujah, He's the helmet of salvation. So don't let the Lord get you some prosper. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, God. We make you up, oh Lord. We honor your presence today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We got place to do, but we just gonna make room. We just making room. Can we just make room? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on and let's remain in the spirit of worship. Be glorified. 
We get the yeah, we, we did not practice at all. But God is good. We're rehearsing. God is good. Amen. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. My God, I'm going to tell you something. When God says he's going to do something, all you have to do is wait. All right? This is the first gospel event we've had at our establishment, my wife and I. So you guys are so welcome. Thank you for blessing us. Blessing these walls. Because every heart is like the blood of Jesus. All right? Every praise is unto our God. Every praise. So thank you for blessing. But we ain't done yet. We are gonna bless you for We're going to start off with this means war. All right? Because I don't know about y'all, there's, there's an unseen word, an invisible word, that exists things that are not for us. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of wickedness in unseen places. And that's what the Bible says. Which means at all times, there's something out there that's against what you're doing for the God, we're here to the lights in the church, some of us, all right? Stand to your feet. I'll put those hands together. Come on! Put those hands together.
Jesus and all he's done. But when I think about what he's doing right now, in this house, somebody's being delivered. springboard and and everything that you do from this day as you said God is give to God first and watch him take you to a freestanding building outside of here a freestanding building and listen when it comes to God you give God first but when it comes to the enemy because they're going to want to use your facility you can charge them a little bit more You charge them a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. You're fair and just, but you charge them a little bit more. Keep God first. Amen? Amen. 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 Real quickly, I want to tell you about being a missionary. And um, I just want to take a few minutes just to speak to you about being a missionary. How many of you know that you don't have to be ordained to be a missionary? Amen. You don't have to be ordained. I can look, see here right now, some people are saying, what is a missionary? According to uh, uh, Webster's Dictionary, the word missionary is defined as a person undertaking a mission, and especially a religious mission. So my question is, how many of you know that you don't have to be ordained to be a missionary? You don't have to be ordained. According to what Jesus tells us as a Christian, we've all been commissioned by Jesus. And Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 19, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as a Christian, you have been commissioned. You've been commissioned by Jesus to be a missionary, and your assignment on your mission is to take the gospel, which is the good news, into the world. You go and bring them the good news, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. You take it to all nations. But how many of you know that when you do what Jesus tells you to do, it's going to lead you into some trouble? 
When you go as a missionary, you may find yourself in trouble. And you may find yourself saying, Jesus, I'm doing what you told me to do. How is it that I'm finding myself in trouble? Somebody sit here and say, no way. I say, yes way it is. It's possible. You can do what Jesus tells you to do and find yourself in some trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen. You say, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. well, I want you to know that opposition is always going to stand between you and what Jesus tells you to do. Right. And opposition is always going to come. But you have to hold on to what you were commissioned to do. And that commission, what Jesus told you to do, it opens many doors for you. And when you realize this, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 16, it tells us about Paul and Silas, and they were in Philippi. And they were, lead, they were uh, which is a leading city uh, in the area of Macedonia. And the Bible tells us that as uh, Paul and Silas, it was a Sabbath day, and they said that they went outside to the gate at the riverside, where they were thinking, and there was a place of prayer. And they sat down and began to speak to the women who had assembled. It was a Sabbath day. It was a day of worship. And they began to preach and teach. And the audience, the Bible tells us, was women. And the Bible tells us that there was a woman named Lydia who was listening. And she was a seller of purple fabrics from the city of Thyatira. And a worshiper of God. Hallelujah. Uh, the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things that were spoken by Paul. And now the Bible tells us, now when she and her household had been baptized, she urged Paul and Silas, saying, you have, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. Paul and Silas were doing what they were commissioned to do. They were going around and they were baptizing. Jesus told them to go, baptize, go, share the good news. Baptized, And then they came to a house where there was a woman who named Lydia, and they were able to be a blessing unto her. And she wanted to be a blessing back to them. There's nothing wrong with somebody blessing you. The Bible lets us know that God said, I'm going to bless those who bless you. And you don't have to worry about fighting all your enemies because God said that I'm going to curse those who curse you. You know, sometimes people want to separate themselves from the enemies, but I want to let you know that God said, you can't keep running from your enemies. Matter of fact, don't worry about them. If, if you allow all your enemies to disappear, where are you going to rest your foot? Because he tells us in his word that your enemies will become your footstool. And some of you know you need to have an ottoman now, but you've already ran your enemies off. But God said he wants to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. But where's your enemies at if you don't have them to see you dying at the Lord's table? If you don't have a place to rest your foot, let me tell you about this, going through, uh, 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 this missionary work. The Bible lets us know that Paul and Silas were doing what they were commissioned to do. But the opposition came along when a slave girl who had a spirit of divination met them. And the Bible says that the woman was bringing great profit to her masters by fortune telling. Mm -hmm. She was a tarot card reader. She would uh, open your hand and tell you what thus and thus from her the spirit of divination That's would tell right. It wasn't from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when she had followed Paul and Silas, she cried out repeatedly saying, These uh, are the bond servants of the Most High who are proclaiming to you a way of salvation. Hallelujah, glory to God. The woman wasn't lying. That's right. They were on an assignment and they were doing what God told them to do. And the woman, no matter how backward-minded she was, she understood what they were doing. She understood their assignment. There's somebody sitting here now who knows your assignment and they're opposing you on your assignment. And you're sitting and you're saying, God, I just want to do what you called me to do. Why is there so much opposition that's coming against me? God, listen, God lets us know that the, four, uh, 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 that, that the woman followed them. And as she followed them, Paul, she kept crying out, these, these are, are the bond servants of the Most High God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. Right here, right? Somebody uh, needs to point well, out no, that one's fine. And this one is fine. Somebody that needs to point it out. Oh, and glory to God, God says she wasn't lying. That's what they were doing. So, so the Bible lets us know that Paul got annoyed. He was greatly annoyed. And he turned and said, uh, to the spirit, not to the woman. Because you have to recognize who it is that you're speaking to. And, and sometimes people get offended because even when you rebuke them, you're not talking to them. You're talking to the spirit that is inside them. And they have to be able to determine that. You have to be able to determine that as well. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? You're going to the wrong ones, saying the wrong things, and next thing you know, you're finding yourself in the mess. And you're going to say, Lord, how did I get here? You're going to say, I don't know either. Because you're doing things outside of the will of God. But Paul and Silas were doing what God told them to do. 
And then Paul got annoyed and he turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And it came out at the very moment. Hallelujah, without delay, it did. When you do what God tells you to do, at the name of Jesus, I don't care what it is. It cannot resist. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Not just in a song, but in the words that you speak. Because you are the voice of God. Everything that was in God is in you. When you became a Christian, it's in you. The Bible lets us know it when the Spirit came out. But at that moment, her master saw that their hope of profit was suddenly gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. And when they had brought them to the chief magistrates, they said, These men, Jews as they are, are causing trouble in our city. And they're proclaiming customs that are not lawful for us to accept, to practice, since we are Romans. Hallelujah, glory to God. The Bible lets us know it says that uh, the spirit in the woman. And once Paul told her, he said, I command the spirit to come out of you. The spirit came out of her. And everybody that she was making money for found out they can't make any money off of her. Some people out here right now, I'm not, I'm not calling names. You know what you do and how you do it. But you were a prostitute. All right, I was a prostitute. Because I've done things outside of what God, would, what God wanted me to do before I met God. And I made money for people doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing before I met God. I prostituted myself in the areas of whatever it is that you want to put the label on. But at the same time, when you're thinking about my label, think about yourself. Because such were some of you. Until you were saved. Until you were washed. Until you were baptized. Until you became a believer. So everything that you want to think that I was doing, think about yourself too. Yes. But the Bible lets us know that when they saw that they couldn't make any more money off of her, they dragged Paul and Silas into the, into the marketplace and they began to beat them. The Bible says that they stripped them of their clothes and they beat them with rods and, and then they had them tossed into the, uh, uh, inner, into the inner part of the jail. When they had struck them with blows in the prison, they commanded them into the prison and commanded the jailer to guard them securely. We were not finished with them yet. There's still some more that they were going to do. And, and let me let you know something. The Bible tells us that the jailer, he said, uh, uh, the jailer having received this command, he threw them into the inner uh, stocks of the prison and fashioned their feet in the stocks. They weren't just on the outside. They were in the deep of the belly of the beast. They were there. And anybody else would have sat there right now and just hung their head down low. They would have began to cry out and said, Lord, I did all that you asked me to do. How did I end up in this pit? That's what Joseph said. Lord, I'm doing what it is you asked me to do. My brothers are hating on me. Why is it they hating on me? You sit here saying, God, I'm just going the path that you put before me. Why is there so much going on here before me? Why do I find myself in a prison? The Bible lets us know that, listen, hallelujah, Paul and Silas, the Bible tells us in Acts 16, 25, the Bible says, now about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing uh, hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. How many of you know that when you begin to pray, wherever it is you are, somebody's listening. Somebody's watching you even now, knowing the path that you're on, knowing how many times you've been knocked down. When is she going to get back up? If you got enough strength to get back up, will he just curse God and die? That's what they're waiting to see you do, even in the prison where they are in chains with you. But I want to let somebody know today that at midnight, the Bible says around midnight, midnight can be any time of the day where you are. And because wherever it is you are, you might be in a self-centered prison right now. You might be in a prison of your own mind. But when you begin to sing and praise God, when you begin to pray and worship God, the Bible tells us, not what Michael saying, but this is the Bible says, and as they began to pray, the Bible says that the chains fell off. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, And everyone in their chains were unfastened. Listen, when you begin to praise, somebody may not be able to praise the way you praise. And then somebody may not be able to holler the way you holler. Somebody may not be as thankful as you are. Somebody can't even open their mouth. Somebody can't even bend their knee. But when you do it, even in a corporate setting, Hallelujah, glory to God, you're going to set somebody free. The Bible lets us know that not only did the, did the, did the inmates get free, but the jailer got saved. Hallelujah. The jailer said, listen, Paul and said, hey, don't kill yourself. We're all still here. You figured they would have ran out because they finally got a chance. No, they stood to testify that no matter where you put us, God was with us. And if God be with us, then who can be against us? It didn't matter if they were in the prison. It didn't matter if they were in the lion's den. It didn't matter if they were in a cistern. They were praising God. And God places us in no matter what situation you may find yourself in now. If it's the Lord who led you there, he's going to lead you through it too. Yeah. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, Lord, here I am. Send me into the wilderness. I want to test. 
Nobody. But the Bible lets us know that when you said yes, matter of fact, when did Jesus first get his test? After his baptism. And what did the scripture tell us? He was led into the wilderness by who? By the Spirit of God. For what? To be tried and to be tested of the devil. God told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he said, I led you into the wilderness for what? To try you, to test you, to see what's in your heart. And then any time when you find yourself in the wilderness experience, you find yourself inside of a prison, I don't care where it is, you begin to reflect on God, you begin to look at yourself and line yourself up with the word of God, and then you sit there and you just start to praise God. Praise God even if the shackles are on. Praise God no matter what it may be, because that's the only way you're going to get out. The Bible didn't tell us that the jailer came and gave a key and said, here, go and lock your friends, everybody get out. No, they knew God. Amen. And they began to praise God. Yeah. And no matter what your situation is, no matter where you may be, if you're, because this is what's going to happen in life. Either you're on your way into the prison, uh -huh. you're in the middle of the prison, or you're coming out of the prison. Yeah. But anywhere you are, you're supposed yeah. to praise God yeah. for where you are. Yeah. If he led you to, he'll lead you through. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's about being a missionary. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. May God bless you.
us as we're about to go to the end of it, um, when we all get to heaven, and then the benediction.
for allowing us to be here in place today Amen. and be filled with all the gifts of the body that God gave us. Yes. He placed us here. Mm -hmm. And we all found it not of ourselves to come to fellowship, Amen. to come and rejoice, to come to break bread, Amen. just to come to be in the Lord's presence. Yeah. And this, the best thing about this is because those who came, I speak for those who came. For those who came, you thought not of yourself, because some people only believe that the gifting belongs inside a building that they call the church. But you know that you are the church. And wherever you go, the Spirit of the Lord goes in you. There are a lot of empty buildings, but people are saying, I'm going to go there on tomorrow because the Lord's going to be there. No, the Lord is only going to be when you get there because he's in you. So wherever it is you go, this is the church here today. We are the church. And I thank you all for being able to come out to share with this uh, experience here today. I, I know it's not going to be the last of it. I can believe that already in my spirit. And I just thank God for anyone who thought not of themselves to come. It's a sacrifice. Anything in ministry is a sacrifice. Amen. And you think not of yourself to do it. And God is a reward for those who diligently think not even of themselves. He'll reward you for everything that you do. It may not come in money, but he's going to reward you. Maybe you'll get an extra gift. Maybe you'll receive more spirituality. Maybe, I don't know, that's God's business. But I'm telling you that he will reward you for what you do for him.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to be able to have a place where we can assemble ourselves. Father, you said in your word, with two or more gathered in your name, you'll be there in the midst of them. And Lord, we thank you that you did not hide yourself here today. We thank you that you showed up and you showed out. We just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And Father, we ask now that you will cover us as we leave this place, but never from your presence, to allow us to reach our next destination and allow us to wake up in the morning to know that we can still be in your presence to give you just another shout of praise for all you have done. We bless you, we praise you, we thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.